It is late in the day on Thursday the 4th of January 2018, I have just been drinking, but earlier in the day I was reading this gas expulsion from Intel in regards to the latest security research findings. This was a video I did yesterday, or probably the day before by the time you actually watch this video, but it detailed about the kernel page table isolation, KPTI, or the other nickname was Kaiser. So as it turns out, there's actually a couple of names for these flaws that have been discovered. They're called Meltdown and Spectre. So first off, let's take a look at the official web page about it, Meltdown and Spectre. Bugs in modern computers leak passwords and sensitive data. Meltdown and Spectre exploit critical vulnerabilities in modern processor. These hardware bugs allow programs to steal data which is currently processed on the computer. While programs are typically not permitted to read data from other programs, a malicious program can exploit Meltdown and Spectre to get hold of secrets stored in memory of other running programs. So Meltdown is what I previously discussed. It breaks the fundamental isolation between user applications and the operating system. This attack allows a program to access memory and thus also secrets of other programs and the operating system. If your computer has a vulnerable processor, and this is pretty much all Intel CPUs manufactured since 1995, with the exception of some of the early Intel Atom CPUs, I believe that's prior to 2011 or 2013, I'm not sure off the top of my head, and the Intel Itanium processors, and those are found in some HP servers. And the other bug, Spectre, breaks the isolation between different applications. It allows an attacker to trick error-free programs which follow best practices into leaking their secrets. In fact, the safety checks of said best practices actually increase the attack surface and may make applications more susceptible to Spectre. Spectre is hard to exploit the Meltdown, but it is also harder to mitigate. And there is a mention of who reported Meltdown and Spectre. So the Intel gas expulsions. Intel and other technology companies have been made aware of a new security research describing the software analysis methods that, when used for malicious purposes, have the potential to improperly gather sensitive data from computing devices that are operating as designed. Intel believes these exploits do not have the potential to corrupt, modify, or delete data. So it is operating maliciously as designed, and no one ever mentioned it had the potential to corrupt, modify, or delete data. No, it is simply taking data. Recent reports that these exploits are caused by a bug or a flaw and are unique to Intel products are incorrect. No, actually it is correct for one of the exploits. For the other exploit, Spectre, it is possible against all the CPUs. Intel is committed to product and customer security, and sure you are, and is working closely with other technology companies including AMD and ARM, and several operating system vendors to develop an industry-wide approach to resolve this issue promptly and constructively. Intel has begun providing software and firmware updates to mitigate these exploits. Yeah, you have. Contrary to some reports, any performance impacts are workload dependent, and for the average computer user should not be significant, and will be mitigated over time. Actually, that is a fairly correct statement there about the impact on performance for the average computer user or maybe the average gamer, you won't really notice any significant degradation in performance. However, servers may be more significantly affected by the impact in performance, and particularly like SQL servers, as PostgreSQL stated, they've seen a 7-30% to reduction in speed. So in turn, you may find your web browsing a bit slower. So yeah, you are actually going to see a degradation in performance, maybe not necessarily for your computer, but for a computer you're accessing over the internet or a web server you're accessing over the internet. Intel is committed to industry best practices and responsible disclosure of potential security issues, which is why Intel and other vendors had planned to disclose the issue next week, when more software and firmware updates will be available. However, Intel is making this statement today because of current inaccurate media reports. Okay, you can make the statement whenever you want. But how early did you know about it, and did this affect the decision on your CEO to sell shares? Intel CEO Brian, can't pronounce your last name, sold off a large chunk of his stake of the company after Chipmaker was made aware of serious security flaws, according to multiple reports. An SEC filing last November showed he sold off the best part of 1 million shares and reduced the total number of his shares to 250,000, which is the bare minimum that an Intel CEO should own. On the other hand, the share price was a little bit higher in November, so it was about $47 at the beginning of November, 
However, around the period he sold, 44.62. And what is it at the moment? Uh, yeah, it took a little bit of a plunge, 43, and then it's coming back. So it shows no matter how much you screw over the entire world, your company will recover, apparently. Not necessarily true for all companies, but apparently in Intel's case it is. Anyway, back to SPR reports. Check with your operating system vendor or system manufacturer and apply any available updates as soon as they are available. Following good security practices that protect against malware in general will also help protect against possible exploitation until updates can be applied. So don't go being stupid on your own computer. I think that's what they're saying, aren't they? <laughs> Can't be anything else, really. Intel believes its products are the most secure in the world. <laughs> okay, whatever. Have that belief if you want it. With the support it's partner, oh, blah, 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 blah. Right, whatever. So, of course, we have to look at the response from Linus Torvalds because he absolutely says things as they are. A competent CPU engineer would fix this by making sure speculation doesn't happen across protection domains. I think somebody inside of Intel needs to take a really long, hard look at their CPUs and actually admit that they have issues instead of writing PR blurbs that say everything works as designed and that really means that all the mitigation patches should be written with not all CPUs are crap in mind. Or is Intel basically saying we are committed to selling you shit forever and ever and never fixing anything? Because if that's the case, maybe we should start looking towards ARM64 people more. I see two possibilities. Intel never intends to fix anything or these workarounds should have a way to disable them. Which of the two is it? Ubuntu have released a statement stating that the kernel updates will be available on the 9th of January, so it's a coordinated release date, and sooner if possible, updates will be available for current supported versions of Ubuntu, which is 17.10, 16.04, 14.04, and 12.04 if you have paid for the extra support. Ubuntu 18.04 will release in April 2018 and will ship with the newer kernel, which includes the KPTI patch set and integrated upstream. So, not a problem there. I absolutely think that Intel deserve to be hauled over the coals for this because they've introduced a massive security vulnerability that's been around for years and it will never really be fixed. It now has to be fixed by the operating systems. And that's assuming in all operating systems will be supported, which they're not. <laughs> they're just not going to be all supported, are they? People will be running old applications and old operating systems for a long time yet. Now, there's no actual exploitation around at the moment. This is all purely theory, but proof of concepts have been demonstrated. So it may not be long until this is weaponized and in use in the wild. Don't know how long, but there is now the potential. It's not a case of if, but when. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all later. <laughs>